continue the example, we'll look at two seemingly identical machines. They're the same size, same clamp tonnage, same general purpose screw design, same shot capacity as far as linear travel of the screw. However, you need to pay attention to all the small print because at the bottom of that list we see that they have two different size injection units, two different screws. If we take a setup sheet from machine A that has um, a 965 PSI hold pressure setting, where our process is running today, machine A is going to generate 9,505 plastic pressure, PPSI, plastic pressure per square inch, when that material is leaving the tip of the screw. We have a pump pressure setting on our setup sheet of 965. That's the value we select on our controller. However, the pressure that the plastic is seeing based on that intensification ratio is significantly higher than that. When we, when we take our, our process or machine dependent value of 965 and we plug that into machine B with a smaller screw diameter, suddenly we're generating significantly higher pressure inside the cavity of the mold. Same machine setting, different screw size, and we've got different plastic conditions. So what we need to do, uh, well, another way of looking at that, here's my 965 PSI setting and the difference on the two machines as plastic pressure in front of the screw. When we have a machine independent setup sheet, Here's our plastic setting. Um, this is simple, basic math where we take our, our setting from machine A, multiply it times the intensification ratio of the machine, get our calculation for plastic pressure in front of the screw. Now, more basic math to divide out the intensification ratio of machine B, and the result is our actual hold pressure setting that we need to enter into the controller on machine B. So it's very important that that the concept is understood um, so that you're able to make that process transfer more effectively. So on a similar graphic to what I've used before, you can see that my setting on the molding machine has to be different in order to duplicate conditions inside the cavity of the mold. So how many are running all electric machines? So you're running some hydraulics. So what I did talk about for the last five minutes does apply. Um, sometimes you'll have a group that has all electric molding machines and they can stick their tongue out because it doesn't apply. However, so when you do have electric molding machines, there's another critical variable that you must account for in an effective mold transfer, and that's volumetric flow. Two electric machines, hydraulic, whatever the case may be, or hybrids, if you have a different size screw and barrel, it's important that you're thinking terms of volumetric flow as opposed to linear distance traveled by the screw when you're setting up your process set, uh, transfer set points. A syringe is a great example, a great analogy of uh, a to talk about this point. You have two different syringe diameters. Um, if you're taking a, a shot of morphine from your doctor for some chronic pain, uh, the shot out of one of these is going to make you feel better. The shot out of the other is just make you dead. So it's very important that we understand when the diameter of the screw changes, we have to account for that in our process setup sheet, convert from linear inches of flow to volumetric flow so that we can enter the appropriate values into the machine controller. third of four plastics variables. We talked about pressure, flow, to look at temperature. Um, what we have to work on now is developing a methodology that allows us to duplicate the melt temperature on two machines. 
Um, this is uh, part of the scientific molding training that we do at RJG, is teaching a method where you can calculate the melt temperature regardless of the setting necessary on the machine to duplicate that same information. So using a handheld parameter and purge and a specific methodology that allows you to consistently determine effective melt temperature of the material and then using settings appropriate on the machine when you make that mold transfer to duplicate the information. And finally the cooling phase we have heat in with our melt temperature. We have heat out with cooling. Uh, we need to have a method of mapping the surface temperature of our mold. Much more critical on semi-crystalline applications than amorphous. Uh, down to the point on semi-crystallines, you may need to map the entire surface and know very specific areas what that mold temperature surface is. Understanding that mold surface temperature may not match what the output is on two different thermolators. So we're going to base on the plastics point of view and then adjust the settings of the external device to match those conditions on the mold. If we have a data acquisition system in place, um, everything we're talking about is very specific to data. Um, this is a screenshot from the RJG's uh, eDART system. In that configuration of that system, we account for plastic pressure and we account for volumetric flow in the setup of that software so the display is automatically converted. We have volumetric flow as far as the linear position of our screw and we've calculated our hold pressure, our plastic pressure in red. Uh, we've already made the conversion from considering the intensification ratio to plastic pressure on that output. So the traces of this information can be used in that mold transfer. We're not, this isn't based on machine settings, but it's based on machine independent information and machine settings can be adjusted accordingly to match these profiles. And this is an example of that. The dashed line is our process from machine A. Now we're going to go to machine B, and the objective is to duplicate those profiles uh, as opposed to transferring machine settings. There may be applications um, based on characteristics such as wall thickness, on the complexity of the geometry of the part, um, on the material selection that you have where machine only data such as this may not be sufficient to effectively transfer the mold. Um, and that's what this slide talks about. In addition to the template, we're also introducing cavity pressure transducers in this application. Uh, the green profile is uh, a transducer located near the gate inside the cavity and then the blue profile is the sensor located near the end of fill. So depending on so a few critical characteristics, you may be, it may be necessary to have that data to make that mold transfer successful. When we're transferring a validated process, the objective for implementing and using scientific molding approach in that mold transfer is to minimize the OQ phase. Very often when uh, a custom molder is transferring a validated process, they have to completely start from scratch on their process development. But if you make that process transfer based on plastics point of view um, and you're able to, to work that into the, the paperwork of that the original OQ, the process transfer will be much more efficient. Um, we've had a customer that, uh, that today is implementing scientific molding and EDART systems. Prior to that implementation, they calculated the cost of a mold transfer to be $10,000. And it required complete beginning uh, from scratch from a baseline on process development on the OQ phase as well as reproducing the PQ. 
now with implementation of scientific molding, looking at things from the plastics point of view, transferring the right information, they're able to minimize or even eliminate the operational qualification after that transfer, go right to their production qualification, um, and be able to run production on that mold as soon as they've done that. So they've significantly reduced the cost of that transfer.